It's time to open up our unsolved case file tonight. And this is the part of the program where we bring you a story that investigators just need some help. I mean, you've got families that are looking for answers, that are searching for justice, uh, but they have not gotten it. And tonight we have to go back to 1998 when a 32-year-old mother and wife disappeared and was found dead in the desert 10 days later. Who killed Amy Armanta Anderson? It's November 1998 in Stanfield, Arizona, a rural town just miles away from Casa Grande. After a 10-day search, a family finds the body of their missing loved one in the middle of the desert. If they found anything, they were supposed to shoot up in the air. The gunshot went off on November 17th, signaling the Stanfield mother was dead. Crime scene photos released exclusively to Nine on Your Side show sticks over Amy's body. Amy Armenta Anderson was dead, but who could have done it? She just had a big, big attitude and a little tiny lady. She was a great cook. She had tons of friends. She was the reason everybody got together. Her daughter, Kimberly Sanders, has raised a family of her own since and even discovered a sister named Sarah she never knew she had. When I did go looking, uh, I basically found out just terrible news, you know, that she had passed away and, um, but I didn't have any information at that time. Sarah Hopkins was put up for adoption because Amy was still a teenager when she gave birth to her. She was growing up in Tucson when Amy lost her life, but now Hopkins has joined the search for answers along with her siblings, starting with more than 200 pages of police reports saved over the years by Amy's family. Nine on your side retracked Amy's steps. November 7th, 1998, Amy takes her family to a church bazaar in Casa Grande. We got back and she dropped me off at my friend's house and that was the last time I saw her. Police reports indicate that Amy's husband told deputies Amy gave a neighbor a ride to his car. What happened next, nobody knows. Just hours after she vanished, her vehicle was found in this parking lot at Stanfield Elementary. The only thing left behind was a pile of her clothes. Well, groundskeeper that lived there on the property saw it outside and um, noticed it was outside for a while and I think Finally, he went out to look at it to see because it wasn't normal for a car to be parked there on a Sunday. The search was on for the family. My uncle, my mom's oldest sister's husband, was the one that found her. Police reports revealed a startling fact. The killer likely used one of Amy's own shoelaces to strangle her. Pinal County Sheriff Mark Lamb wants this case solved. They narrowed their suspect list to one man, the neighbor that was last seen with Amy. I wouldn't say evidence, but there's some statements that, that lead us to believe that he might be a prime suspect in this case. We had lived there for eight years, and we were just neighbors, you know, and we had seen him come and go th <clears throat> throughout the years. Detectives questioned the neighbor last known to be with Amy, but that neighbor says the two went their separate ways at the Circle K on Stanfield Road. He ended up moving out of Stanfield, and years later, he was arrested for murdering a young woman, leading detectives to take another look at him. We reached out to the Pennsylvania facility to ask if he'd be willing to do an interview, which he declined. Investigators even tried to send evidence back for DNA testing years later, but the Department of Public Safety declined it. The evidence was brought to the sheriff's office back then um, for DNA. And because we couldn't put the evidence in any particular place, there's no chain of custody. Is it safe to say that this case is at a standstill because the suspect is refusing to interview with you? It is unfortunately at a standstill. Another setback in the case, two key pieces of evidence were lost years before Sheriff Lamb took office. The murder weapon and the vehicle that was found at Stanfield Elementary. But Sheriff Lamb says the case is still solvable. Well, it's a really small town and people know things and I just wish that they would speak up. All right, folks, here's the numbers for the uh, Pinell County uh, Sheriff's Office. 520-866-5111. 520-866-5111. Um, that neighbor, I guess, ended up in Pennsylvania, so maybe you know him. Maybe you came across him. Maybe he said something. Um, if you know anything, as small as it may be, uh, please reach out. Again, we, we highlight these stories and these cases um, because they need help, and that help could very well uh, come from someone who's watching tonight. 
Uh, let's bring in our special guest now, joining us in New Haven, Connecticut, retired FBI special agent and senior lecturer at the University of New Haven, Kenneth Gray is with us. Kenneth, great to see you. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Great to be back with you again. So um, everyone just watched that piece and everyone's saying, it's the neighbor. It's the neighbor, right? I mean, um, but we've got some problems here. We've got some problems because we, we've got uh, uh, the whole issue with what happened with the evidence. Uh, are you surprised that there wasn't a better system back in 1998 for handling this evidence? We had DNA in 1998, didn't we? We certainly did. And uh, to, to lose track of the murder weapon in a case like this, that's unconscionable. Uh, you know, that your whole case has been jeopardized by the loss of that evidence. Even if they had people who came forward and said that, that the, uh, the neighbor confessed to them about this, they would not be able to build a case at this time because they don't have the murder weapon anymore. That ligature is gone. Possible DNA on that ligature is gone. They cannot really build a case without the shoelaces. Yeah, you know, you, you look at what happened in 1998, as tragic as it was, but if that happened today, it just seems like this one could be wrapped up relatively quickly because they, they, from the beginning, they knew that there was some connection with this neighbor that she was giving him a ride, and he's the last known person to be with her. So he's still the, the person they should focus on. I think that the, the approach they should take at this point would be a listening post. That is, to, to work with uh, the correctional facility to try to obtain any information that he might provide to other inmates about his previous crimes. He might still be bragging about that to other inmates, and those statements could be used against him. Then they'd have to take their best shot. But again, without that, uh, without their shoelace, without the vehicle, it's going to be very, very difficult to convince the jury. We have posted this uh, on Facebook and uh, would ask everyone to share it when you have an opportunity. So, again, we can spread the word and, and widen the scope of people um, that are reminded of this case or may know something. Uh, but we did get some comments. Uh, Lisa Berry tonight, the neighbor is probably responsible. He killed once, and he wouldn't have had a problem killing again. DNA can be traced even if they have to travel to him to get it. Um, as we said, I think we've lost the source of the DNA, though. That might be the problem because, you know, we lost the chain of custody, and, and it, they don't want to even test it, the lab. You can, you can get his DNA but there's no way to tie that DNA to this particular case. The murder weapon, the, the shoelace, may have had DNA on it, but they don't have that anymore. The vehicle, if she gave him a ride, his DNA may be in the, the passenger seat, but they don't have that vehicle anymore. So right now, there is no evidence with the crime scene to tie the crime scene to this neighbor. And I'm wondering, uh, uh, Kenneth, knowing that he's in prison now for killing a young woman, suspected in this one, do you think there's an investigation into other places that he lived in between and maybe looking at some of those cases as well? I would think that, uh, that a person like this might be a potential subject in other cases. So I certainly agree with you that he should be looked at as far as his, his travel and to see if there are any unsolved cases in those areas too. All right, folks, again, if you have any information, uh, there's the number, 520-866-5111. Kenneth Gray, joining us from the University of New Haven. Always great to speak with you. Uh, really appreciate your expertise and your time. And I'm looking forward to your coverage next week on the George Floyd case. Absolutely. Begins on Monday. Thanks so much. All right, folks, when we come back, we'll bring in uh, more members of law enforcement. It's crime time coming up.